Okay, so we are now back in Microsoft Flight Simulator. We're in the, the little barren. Some, some tweaks have been made to this plane. Um, hopefully it'll run relatively well here. Um, but this is the, uh, the new update to Japan. And I had flown here just based off of uh, just random interest a few weeks ago and was really let down by how it looked. Um, there, it was not great. So, uh, what we're going to do is check out, um, as I get this thing kind of situated here, um, we're going to check out downtown Tokyo, which is just right over here, and then I want to go find uh, Fuji International Speedway and see how that looks. Basically as a um, as an excuse to fly around a little bit in Japan. Uh, it'll be a good way to whoa, to take a look at some of the scenery and just get a feel for what kind of additions they made to Japan here. But the first thing is leaving uh, the international airport here, which looks nice. Big airports are, are not my thing, so I could not tell you thing one about this airport. It's big, it's next to Tokyo, and it seems like it's fine. <laughs> That's a, that's about it. Definitely out of my element here. Have a twin engine, two engines, runway one six and left. international airspace. So that is going to be weird. I almost had my first um, twin engine experience, but it fell through, as is sometimes the case. How do you sp how do you say Sia in Japanese? Yeah, somebody do the translation for Sia in Japanese. Okay, Baron two zero four Lima Echo, we are ready to take off. Let's get the strobes coming on, lights, camera. What's our transponder set to standby? Let's get it on altitude mode, and we'll just pretend like we're VFR, and we'll also pretend that that is the same code in Japan for VFR. Uh, Dave, happy uh, Tuesday. What day is it? Tuesday? Happy Approaching Tuesday, man. Approaching runway one six left. Entered runway Got our one six radio left. operator's 9, license. Nine thousand eight hundred feet remaining. Whoa! What is that little, little bump there? Okay, winds seem to be calm. There's a little bit of a left crosswind. Sayonara? Yeah? Dude, the, the frame rate on the G1000 is really, really slow. Like, awkwardly slow. Where are we going? Oh, okay, okay. There's, there's Fuji in the background. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so that guy's taking off. We're going to... Turn over the over the bay here. God, the water looks so awesome. Jamada. Okay, so we're we're now turning over Tokyo Bay, and we're gonna do just a little flyby of this city here. It looks full and awesome. One thing that it does not have is a lot of um, maritime traffic. And I've noticed that in other locations, but in a big harbor like this, it is kind of noticeable that the um, that the harbor is pretty, pretty dead. And if I'm a flight sim enthusiast, from the aviation perspective, I don't really care about that. Um, but given given all of the other details that they've added, it's a little bit noticeable uh, of an omission. I I think. I don't know. What do you What do you guys think? Is it weird that there are no boats, or does it not really matter? Who cares? I think it feels a little bit weird. Um there is a setting for boat traffic. 
that would um, that would explain. <laughs> Holy <laughs> that, s, dude! What's up, White Lake? That would explain the lack of boat traffic. Um, uh, I don't know how that movie ended, dude. We're gonna check it out right now. What is it? Traffic? Is it under traffic? Uh, ships and ferries is very low. So let's crank that up, and then let's crank this up. I don't road vehicles. I don't care about road vehicles, but leisure boats. I care about leisure boats. Okay. Does that do anything? How many, how many leisure boats do we see now? Wow! Look at this harbor, though. So it's still doing, you know, the photo geometry stuff and looks good in places and is tripping up in, in other places, but I don't think that this was a photo geometry uh, rich area, um, if I recall correctly. So this is pretty cool. Again, not despite us moving up the slider, not much in the way of uh, leisure boats. But that looks pretty, pretty great. <laughs> yeah, 11 out of 100 is probably not going to do it. Is it? Uh, this bridge looks fantastic. Please don't be invisible wall. Please don't be an invisible wall. Please don't be an invisible wall. It was a little bit of an invisible wall. What the hell? All right, let's go check out the big old, big old tower, and then we'll loop back and try to find the um, Fuji International Speedway. Uh, this looks better. This definitely looks better than the last time I checked out Tokyo. Um, I like that a lot. That looks cool. It's still, for some reason, and not really, I'm not, it feels dead. The environment itself feels a little dead and stale. And I've no, and that's not a critique of, of Tokyo or Japan. It's just kind of something that I've noticed in general about, uh, about this simulator. And I don't know what it is. It definitely helps when you've got pilot edge on and there's air traffic and um, you know you're kind of in a, a more familiar location and you can see traffic on the road and stuff. Um, but yeah, it does it does feel a little bit like it's what it is, which is just a simulator, which isn't bad. I mean, that's a that's a really stupid critique, but it it if you Hopefully anybody knows what I'm talking about at this point, but um, it just feels kind of sterile. Like it's it's so realistic looking, but it's but nothing's happening, nothing's going on. Like the roads just look dead. I know I have the sliders turned down for for traffic, but there's no even like appearance of maybe there's you know uh, people are are living their lives down there, which is not really, shouldn't be a critique in a flight simulator. Give me working GPS and avionics and systems and we're fine. But um, it's that like uncanny valley that you've hit when you get scenery that looks this good. Um, LPO Aviation working on your written right now. Congratulations, dude, that's awesome. Captain Henry, hello, happy Tuesday to you. Uh, just hopping in, been inspired to look into flight school. I'm going to intro fright next Monday out of Bellingham. Dude, that is fantastic, man. Congratulations. Uh, that is some really, really fun airspace to fly around uh, in the Pacific Northwest. It's gorgeous, and you can get super far really, really quick. Um, you know, you probably don't find yourself flying or, uh, you know, going down to Seattle too often, but with. Um, with aviation, you can get down there really quick. Um, that's really cool. Yeah, this this looks awesome. 
All right. Yeah. So not Air Force proud agrees that it it feels kind of empty. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like that's probably. Do I have the gear? Is the gear still friggin' down? Of course it is. Fantastic. So what you get on the 4LE Tokyo Tours. We're gonna be burning uh, 30 gallons of gas per side because your pilot in command doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, that's what I don't... Uh, yeah, taser face. That's kind of what I was thinking as well. Like, just what can you do to make it feel more dynamic? And I don't I don't know. And at 40,000 feet, none of that matters at all. But, um, you know, when you're, when you're departing an airport or flying low over a city, it does feel noticeably sterile. Got my Discovery flight coming Friday out of Bremerton. Dude, that's awesome. Uh, rampant, that's really cool. That is, Bremerton was actually where Julia and I uh, took our Discovery flight. We, we departed near, or we departed Tacoma Narrows and then we did some air work, landed at Bremerton and then came back. So I've been to Bremerton many, many times. Yeah, I have, uh, I have been to the airport many times. Stop expecting it to be something it's not. I'm not expecting it to be anything. I'm quite the opposite. I don't think that it needs to be... I don't think that it needs to feel lived in. It just doesn't. And it's more noticeable than it was in X-Plane because the that looks so amazing. You know, it's it's a... It looks like the real city, but it looks like the real city if it had been deserted. X-Plane didn't really feel like the real city it felt like a flight simulation approximation of a city and you know, it was it was fine and it's it's all you needed um but because this looks so good it's in that uncanny valley of um i'm finding myself expecting certain things to act a certain way because it looks so good and it doesn't and it's not a bad thing and I don't think they should even spend any time fixing it. I think the you know having elephant herds of elephant is a complete waste of time um, it makes it look more lived in but that's not what we want out of this we want it to be a a proper flight simulation and it's marginally doing that right now and I am very marginally doing that right now so um. all right so now we're coming into the city of Yokohama um, and we're actually making pretty good time in this little barren I haven't touched anything we're just cruising along at 185 so that's good um, and we should probably be over in the area that that Fuji is pretty quick. That track looks so pretty. There is the namesake of that beautiful circuit. Yeah, what I was hoping, what I was expecting this to be is a flight simulator. And that's where I am disappointed, is that it doesn't have, you know, working GPS or planes that are that are fully functioning in the way that even a default plane should be. Um, that's the disappointing part. The, the visuals are largely not disappointing. But it is noticeable when it looks that good. I mean, look at that down there. It looks so cool. But there's just no, you know, there's no cars on the road. There's no ships out there we crank the we crank the boat traffic up i don't know if that needs a restart or not but there's definitely not any shipping traffic out there thank you nightbot of course again for stacking all of your nice notifications up like oh man like to obviously that this is um 
an, an area that they just updated and are pointing everybody to. But that, I mean, it's a custom building that just works. That's, I mean, that is the building that's right there. That is what the skyline looks like. And there, you know, there's no packs that you had to download. And it, I mean, it's streaming that in. It's doing its thing. That is awesome. You know, if you flew around this place enough times and kind of got a feel for where everything was, if you went there in real life, you would know exactly where everything was. And that is really crazy that I can do that. Uh, think of it more as a paid open beta. Oh, for sure. Yeah, and that's why, one, it's a, it's a paid open beta, and two, only fly the piston, <clears throat> excuse me, the piston GA planes. Just fly the 152, and this thing will be super, super fun. Uh, anything else, anything beyond that, um, it's going to be a total pain in the ass. Clicking the VOR map just crashed the sim to desktop. <laughs> well, I'm not going to test it now. <laughs> I hope, I hope it's not. Hey, Julia, how do you feel about a little um, scotch, please? I feel great about a little scotch. The cub is really fun. The cub is a lot of fun. I was reading on the forums that it did that, and sure enough, ugh. I tried to do an A320 from from John Wayne to San Diego last night. Landed in the ocean. <laughs> yeah, the airline stuff is is a total total disaster. I've I've barely 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 touched any of that, but yeah, it looks like a it looks like a nightmare for sure. I don't know. It's just not. It's not fun at all, and I can see that's where. Um, <laughs> I, I can see that's where you would get really frustrated um, and bail on it if you tried to fly you know, in, in the airlines. Um, IFR, you know, just like in general, um, it's not. It's not good, and and you know that should be met with frustration. Um, but uh, let's see. Refresh. That's weird. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry about that. If that cut out. Um, Still, OBS is still going for me. I think that's something on the uh, on the Twitch side. It looked like almost uh, very weird, very very weird. Uh, yeah, what what I was saying is that um, you know it's it's a shame that you pay that much money and and what you get for it does not reflect that that cost. Um, uh, if someone were in flight school, what do you think the best things that can be practiced in the flight sim? Oh, um, Hassim, that is a great question. Uh, communication, navigation, flight planning, and procedures. That's it. Um, those, those are it. Yeah, do, do not practice stalls and maneuvers. <laughs> That's, that would be the last thing you'd want to practice. Communication, so whether you're on VATSIM or Pilot Edge, um, you can do it just by yourself as well, uh, especially if you're flying out of Bremerton. That's an untowered field, so you can make your, you know, your untowered radio calls um, and practice those. But the, the things that the simulator does well is procedural stuff. Um, 
and you kind of have to be smart about it too if, if it if it's not your airplane that's in the simulator um, you know the the button placement the um, uh, you know just what the plane has the avionic equipment all that stuff is going to be different um, likely in your plane I was lucky to have pretty similar setups to the uh, the plane that I flew in the real world this does look really nice this the scenery is really nice um, so I would go through I'd have the real checklist um, I you know took a picture of the checklist that was in the plane and I would put it on my second screen and go through the checklist um, just as I would in the real plane um, but yeah the last thing you want to do is anything that um, has to do with actually feeling and handling the plane uh, that will set you back um, but what you can do is study the charts, open up Sky Vector, um, plan a flight, you know, do an A to B flight, how long did it take, what direction are you going to fly in, can you make a nav log, can you make a flight plan, can you determine what airspaces you're going into, over, through, um, what your altitudes are, all that stuff. You can all do that in the sim and be ready to go even for your discovery flight. Um, but listen to your instructor and, and really feel how the plane is, um, you know, feel the actual plane. Um, the, the simulator is, is not going to do anything um, for maneuvers. Connection lost. Okay. We're having some network issues. Um, so yeah, just just focus focus on the concepts of planning a flight in airspace. And, hey, and you'll be bird, good. Whoa, buddy. Um, Bill for L. Woody's. <laughs> Q, thank you so much for seven months successfully connected. Why is that a warning? Um, mm, not really, man. I mean, Eli, honestly. Um, you know, you can get some idea for maybe, um, you know, like the general concept of doing a steep turn and stuff, but it's it's really it it, it would really set you back to um, to do anything ahead of time that is in any way connected with the feel of the airplane, whether it's takeoffs, landings, maneuvers, stalls, any of that stuff that's actually aerodynamically driven. Um, and Q, the MEI guy, um, he's he's an MEI. He's a multi-engine instructor, CFII, CFI, um, and he'll he'll tell you that um, without a doubt. That is the the best thing you can do with a flight simulator. It is procedures, planning, being able to put your plans into action in a 3D relatively. Um, uh, realistic environment like your your speeds your altitudes the terrain are all going to be realistic so flight planning is great to practice but fly on the autopilot I mean I I flew on autopilot all the time I mean it was just there's because there's no point keeping this plane straight and level trimmed out in any sim like any plane in any sim is not going to be anywhere near the real plane and it's It'll, it will set you back um, to, to try to replicate that, so, yeah. Yeah, but Hasim, like if you, if you load up your plane, I mean, I just say you're gonna be flying a 172. So you load up in the 172 in this, in this sim. Um, you know, if you have the steam gauge, that one's probably better. If you don't, you know, the, the G1000 will be fine. Um, get out a, a checklist, a G1000 checklist. And you know you can you can go through that checklist. The real like the, get the real world checklist. Get the real use real world charts, real world checklist. Don't use anything that the sim has going on. Don't touch it. Just have everything turned off. No checklists. No flight plans. Nothing. All turned off. And then go through the the steps of planning a flight. Um, starting up the plane, using the checklist, taxiing out, taking off, going through the checklist again, going through a cruise checklist, 
and just repeat all of that and the point to point stuff you know just put put the autopilot on and cruise around and you know when it comes time to land go through your landing checklist and then just get the plane on the ground don't worry about how good the landing is if you're on center line how many times you bounce if the front wheel came off if the engine stopped if you porpoised it don't worry about any of that just get the plane on the ground and taxi so um what if i oh what if do and where it be but uh what <laughs> Yeah, Dave, this scenery is is absolutely gorgeous. Um, eating demo, uh, if if you can rephrase that, um, be <laughs> be happy, be happy. There's a you have a lot of, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's cool, Sam. Well, it's it should be something that you should be excited for because it, it. I mean, I remember mine like it was yesterday, and you know, I'm I am a private pilot now and have been fortunate enough to do a lot of cool things in airplanes, and I still remember that day. Um, <laughs> a stream has been great, man. Thank you. Stream has been great. Yeah, it's it's so it's so much fun. You're gonna have a blast, and make sure you're in the um, you're in the Discord, I think, right? So make sure to um, let us know how it goes. Take some pictures, post some pictures. This kind of seems like it's where the the track should be. Like it's, I know it's up against a hill, and that kind of looks like it should be the track. Yeah, oh, that is absolutely the track. Hell yeah. I don't know if this is still the case, but this used to be the longest straightaway on the F1 calendar uh, when they would come here. Oh, that's awesome. How high res is this going to look? It's not too bad. It's not too bad. Uh, how did you find your flight training? Um, what? Oh, how did I fund it? Oh, I just did. I funded it by well, one by streaming. Um, helped helped a lot. Um, but the main the the main way I funded it is took it slowly, um, which is not really recommended. And Q would probably say this as well. Like the more you could fly, the better. I wasn't able to fly. I couldn't afford to fly as much. So what I did is flew less frequently, but I practiced my ass off in between. That's really how I funded it. Because I, I flew so much on Pilot Edge and studied so hard at home that by the time I got in the plane, I was so far ahead of where... I would have been had I not practiced that it would have cost a lot more so I I was soloing the plane at John Wayne and I've said this you know a bunch of times this isn't necessarily something that you should shoot for it's what happened it's how I did it it's not gonna be it's not gonna reflect everybody but I soloed after um, about six hours Sink rate. Sink rate. It was like just about six hours of total time that I soloed at John Wayne. And then I did my solo cross-country flight at 12 hours. And that was from a you know, busy Charlie Airport through LA Bravo twice, um, and then landing at one of the busiest GA airports in SoCal at Camarillo. And that was after 12 hours. And that's something that you'd usually do. You'd usually solo between 15 to 20 hours, and then, you know, I don't know, your cross-country is at whatever, 10, 10 more than that, so 30 hours maybe. But I had everything, everything done, and that helped save me a ton of money. So that's, that's more or less how I funded it, was just studying. 
um, you know, and and just uh, just was prepared, and I didn't I didn't uh, stop, you know. So if I flew every other week, I didn't take you know every other week off. I was studying the whole time leading up to the time I got in the plane, so everything was all fresh. So. Um, Oh, nice, Eli. Yeah, soloed at, at 17. Yeah, that's about, that's probably about average, right? 15 to 20. And, um, that's fine. You know, I mean, that's, I, and I hesitate sometimes to, to mention that because it is really low. And it shouldn't be a competition, like, who can get the lowest time to solo? Because just people learn at different rates and, just do things differently and that may not be the best safest smartest way to do it it you know my cfi and i just determined that hey we're you know there's no reason to not do this we're ready ready to go let's knock it out so, uh let's see i have been controversially looking into a couple of those fast track career programs i've been worried that their training is too fast they've attracted me because of their financing yeah dude just take it Take it one lesson at a time. That's all you got to do. I mean, the the discovery flight that you're going to take, that you're going to go on, uh, imagine flight training, just you're doing, you're scheduling a discovery flight one after the other. You know, that's one way to do it. And if you, if you're low on funds for that month and, you know, you got to take, you know, you got to take a couple weeks off just to replenish or something. There's nothing wrong with that. Just, you know, take take a little bit of time off. Study your ass off so when you get back in the plane, you're not taking a step back. And just chip away at it. That's how I did I was like, look, I can't, I can't look at it as, hey, it's $15,000 to get my license. Or it's, you know, it's between eight to $10,000. I couldn't, I couldn't wrap my head around having to pay that amount of money. This little valley right here, by the way, is insanely gorgeous. With with the mountain here and the racetrack and that lake, like this is so cool. Golf course, really love it. But yeah, I, I couldn't let myself think about it in terms of the total cost. I was like, hey, how much money do I have to fly this month? And I would just fly that amount of you know time. Like I got enough money for two lessons this month. You know, hour each, 250 bucks. You know, knock knock it out. You know, I'm I'm getting the books. I'm watching videos. I'm chatting online with people. I'm getting help in discords. I'm meeting friends at the airport. Um, yeah, by the mic. Yeah, there's a lot of lot of cool uh, airports out here. You know, hanging out at the airport is a great way to do to do it as well. Because you will, if you hang out, if you're an airport rat, what's going to happen is you're going to run into somebody that's like, hey, I'm going up to get night current tomorrow. You want to come? Or, hey, I'm, I've got, a, you know, I'm, I'm logging time for commercial flight. Do you, you know, I'm, I'm going to go on a long cross country. Do you want to go with me? And you, you're going to get time in the airplane that, you know, you're just along for the ride and just soak that in. Wolfpack, welcome aboard. Happy Tuesday. <laughs> pilot is spelled perfectly. That is exactly how pilot is spelled. Do I have two T's? I'm missing. I'm missing the T. Well, yeah, but you can't. You you can't be safety pilot until you're a private pilot. I can fly. I'm pilot. This mountain looks awesome. Yeah, th this looks way better than it did before. Yeah, the, the thing about the safety pilot is in order for them to log it, you also have to be um, private pilot. Um, pilot. I, it needs the Y, though. The Y is key. It needs the Y. <laughs> pilot? Like, yeah, I don't know. It needs the, I think it just needs the second T is what I'm, is what I'm missing. Yeah, I need ballast in the right seat. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, and that's Hasim. That's where just being a part of the community will help you. 
like you gotta you gotta be at the airport you gotta be you know like there we have a lot of pilots and people from the pacific northwest in the discord so if you're in there just keep keep chatting keep asking like you you just never know because people are very excited when other people are starting to learn how to fly to be pilots and they're more than willing to help you in a number of different ways and some of that is like hey you want to you want to go because i will tell you what flying by your as cool as it is to say you solo it at a certain number of hours or whatever flying by yourself is not fun <laughs> it's cool it's pretty cool but it is not like it's not something that i look forward to doing because i would rather go do it with somebody i'd rather share it share the experience with somebody so if i if i have to go fly for a particular reason um, and somebody's around that wants to go like, hey, you want to go? I'm, I'm going to go get night current. You want to you want to come along? Then, yeah, <laughs> it's boring. Yeah, it's it is really boring. There's something to like. It is cool when you do it for the first time, the first few times. You know, like, you're like, hey, dude, this is this is awesome. Um, I'm flying an airplane all by myself, and it's up here, and it's it's soothing, it's quiet, it's you know all that you know majestic and all that crap um that's all true but i would rather use that time if i'm paying for the plane to have somebody there to share it with Every, without question <laughs> unless you're in a spitfire yeah i yeah jojo i still enjoy it yeah but i would rather if i had the choice i would rather bring somebody so if if there's somebody that's like hanging out at the airport all the time and you know, is like asking me questions about being a pilot and, you know, showing showing genuine interest in it. Um, and I need somebody to, to come along or, you know, I'm just like, hey, I'm going to go fly to pick up something over here. Do you want to come? Like it, it happens all of the time, all the time. You know, before Brad was my instructor, he called me up one day and was like, hey, I'm, I'm going to go get Hold night up. current. Do you want to come? And I was like, dude, hell yeah. And I had like 10 hours at that point. So, yeah, I am for sure going to go. Um, Rawl 3500, welcome aboard. Uh, oh, this, I can, I can uh, already say this sentence is going to be uh, a good question. But let me answer a scene first. When you hang out at the airport, how do you mean not in the terminal, like an aviation club or something? No, like go to, go to Bremerton. It's, you can go on the field and just go walk around the airport. Like, the gate's open. If you see somebody working on their plane at, in their hangar, go say hi and say, hey, I'm, I'm becoming a student pilot. I just wanted to say hi. I'm, you know, I live in the area. And just just be, be as outgoing as you can. Trust me, it will, um, it will work. Um, yeah, Senpai, so far this is good, man. Are there any particular bad habits to avoid when learning in the sim so you don't carry over in the real world? Yeah, we, t we just talked about this. It's anything that has to do with airplane feel. Um, I just stay away from that. Like, don't, don't worry about how the plane lands or how it feels when you're doing a stall or, you know, uh, doing a steep turn or any of that stuff. It's, it really is great for the concepts of flying. So, air trap ATC. Um, you know, Pilot Edge is unbelievable. Pilot Edge is unbelievable. Um, that sim is good too. Uh, they're different, different focuses in my opinion. But um, th that's great. Use the real world checklist. Flight plan. Do flight plans. Like just Delta to Delta, Charlie to Delta, Charlie to Delta through a Bravo. Like just do flight plans. Um, learn airspace. All that stuff is valuable when you're learning to fly far beyond the feeling of the airplane because you will learn that all in the airplane and it is nothing like in the sim it's it just is not uh i learned flying on gliders which allowed me to get my private license for half of the normal price in france and by the way flying gliders is really good school to begin awesome dude nice wismar that's super cool um 
Oh, are you ramp rampant? You're in Bremerton. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah, Bellingham will be a little bit different, um, but same thing still applies. Um, by the way, I just opened my sim and the VFR map and did not crash into the desktop. Sync okay, rate. so Sync right, rate. right there, don't use that VFR map in the sim. Do not use that. Use Sky Vector. That VFR map, this thing, is a mess. It doesn't really, it doesn't really help. Um, whoa! Also, look where you're going. Is this a heavy consequence turnaround point? <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to see if I can. I am not really paying attention to any of like my instruments, so I don't even know what altitudes we're at or what's happening here. I could probably like get the get the mixture down a little bit and probably improve performance to some degree. I'm just looking at the scenery. I'm like not paying attention to how this plane flies at all. Um, uh, let's see. But yeah, in Belling, like, some airports are harder to do that hang out at the airport thing than others. Um, I don't really know Bellingham very well, so I don't know how that airport's set up. Um, but there's going to be probably an FBO. There's going to be, you know, just a place where a lot of old guys are hanging out. Um, just try to run into anyone. If you see somebody that looks like they're a pilot, just say, hey, excuse you know, think of a, come up with a, like, a question. Have, like, have a question in mind, even if you know the answer to it. Um, have a question in mind that you want to ask a pilot, a real pilot out of Bremerton or uh, Bellingham. And just look for somebody that you think is a pilot and say, hey, excuse me, are you a pilot? You know, yeah, what, you know, what's going on? Hey, I, um, I wanted to ask you, like, what, what air class, you know, what, uh, what airspace is Bellingham? Or, um, you know, uh, something. Like, yeah, again, it could, be, it could be almost anything. Like, hey, I'm, I'm uh, starting to be a student pilot, and I just wanted to ask, you know, like, what do you think about flying out of here? Do you like it or, you know could be even something basic like that but just just ask um eyes have a great one man thank you for for joining <laughs> what a time to join yeah we're making our way to the top of this thing my my four flight trace oh it's actually like reset a couple times i've I've definitely circled this thing more than it has seemed to indicate that I am. Um, and there's also probably a smaller airport nearby too that would be good as well. Like even if um, you know, like I don't know the Bellingham airspace really, but um, yeah. Yeah, um, what was I going to say? Uh, I don't know that airspace, like what's local to there, really. Um, but I'm sure there's going to be like a, a smaller, untowered little field there. Um, and everything's relative. You know, you say that Bellingham's a little airport. I think it's actually, it's like, it doesn't, it serves some regional jets, right? Like there's, there's a, an actual terminal there, I believe. So that you know that would be considered a pretty big airport and you'll you'll find out what a little airport is bellingham would will you know definitely definitely be lower lower down on the the size scale but not as much as you might think there especially in washington there's way little um yeah ryan um Asim is is from Bellingham and has his discovery discovery flight soon. Yeah, no, I know, I know. Bellingham has a tower. I'm just saying that it is, it in in the um, in the range of different airports, it's going to be pretty, you know, relatively good size. 
there are some small, there are some tiny friggin' airports out there. <laughs> well, and it's not even that it's bigger than you think. It's that when a lot of people think about airport size, they equate it to um, commercial airports. So, like, I mean, I've heard John Wayne be like, oh, John Wayne's kind of a small airport. Okay, yeah, it's a small, it might be small airport because it's not sprawling and doesn't have, you know, A380s hey, coming in there. Oh, Rampant Tycho, thank you so much for the subscription. Welcome aboard. That is super cool. Um, welcome and thank you for the, uh, the support. That's super cool. Is anyone else getting, like, dizzy? I feel like every time I do one of these things where I'm trying to, like, reach the top of a mountain or something, um, I get, like, 80% of the way up when I think, like, why am I doing this? And then I have to finish it because I'm already, like, almost there anyway, so. <laughs> uh, that is super, super cool. But, yeah, it's, it's really, you know, like, the size of the airport will be relative to what is in your area. So John Wayne is a small airport in terms of, you know, runway length, number of runways, size of size of planes that fly in there, but it's super super busy versus some place like Corona, which is even smaller, doesn't have a tower, but is even busier and crazier. Um, and sometimes size doesn't always equate into ease of operations or busyness. Ramp it. Really, man? If that's the case, dude, that is the coolest thing to say to me. Um, wow, that's really cool. My videos helped push me to finally pursue my BPL. That's freaking crazy, dude. Um, uh, Long Beach is great. Yeah, there's a lot... There's a lot of people in here that actually have learned out of Long Beach. What altitude are we even at? 12,000? Um, but yeah, Long Beach is great. Yeah, that's a good... Um, wow, man, both you guys. Dude, that's that's super that's super cool for you to say that. Um, I, you know, I, I partially um, do this because it helps me. Um, you know, like these streams help me stay sharp. So like I said, I don't fly all the time, but when I do, I'm kind of already ready to go. Um, so that's really helpful, but to, to in any way impact somebody that's trying to do this themselves, um, is really, Destination really is that's really, um, That's actually really pretty touching for you guys to say that because, um, well, you'll see. I think you'll see. There will be there will be a time um, if you remember this conversation and you telling that to me. There will be a time when you think, "Wow, that I get what Bill is saying because it's so difficult to do." Oh, Raul, I appreciate that, man. Yeah, that's really, Sync that's rate. super cool. Um, but there, there's, there's so much that you have to do to, you know, learn and put yourself through. And it, it, it becomes this thing that you obsess over in, like, a uh, arguably healthy way. I would, I would, Julia might, might, like, <laughs> that is way, way banked over um you know julia would probably argue if it's it's borderline unhealthy but but there's just like this this um this insane feeling of like wanting to do it so much and studying you know like we're we're like man if i if i was like this at school i'd be a freaking physician or something um but you'll, you'll get to the point where you love it so much and you want to share it to so many people that if there's anything you can do to help facilitate somebody also doing it and getting them to realize that it is possible, um, you'll realize how much that means if you, if you do make that happen for somebody. It's really, really cool.
something you learn with uh, with glides is improvising landing when you can't get back to your airport. <laughs> yeah, that that's very true. You're always always looking for uh, a place to land. Okay, I think I think that's a good that's a good spot right there. Oh yeah. Oh, it's nice. Smile for the thumbnail, little Baron. Smile, smile for the thumbnail. There you go. Good job, buddy. Uh, I'm gonna go land. There's another. There's an airport out here that I need. Uh, I'm not from there, but a friend of mine from there, and dad is Cap. It is it is a really cool flying area. Yeah. Very, very cool. I am still obviously extremely partial to our little corner of the world here in um, SoCal, but I did grow up in Washington, and it is very, very pretty. But yeah, I mean, just ask ask away too. Like there, and that's one thing you just have to constantly ask questions. And if you know, I'm, I'm extremely grateful that you guys do watch the stream. Um, and whatever entertainment value you get out of it, I hope is is a bonus. But use it as um, you know a chance to learn something. Whether we're doing something goofy or not, um, ask questions. BC, happy Tuesday. Thank you for joining us tonight. Have a great night, sir. You know, don't don't think that something is, you know, there is a question that, there's no bad questions in aviation for sure, uh, to, a, to a point. <laughs> Obviously with anything, that's kind of a cliche that I don't always prescribe to. There, there can be definitely dumb questions, but at this point when you're learning just always, always ask um, as many questions as you can think of. It'll, it'll be worth it. Um, you know, and I, I've said this recently too, a good instructor will tell you, uh, don't worry about that right now. And that might be the case. It doesn't mean that it's a bad question. It just means that there might be something that you need to learn and understand first, or it's not applicable yet, so don't get bog, bogged down. <laughs> Is this enough rudder? Yeah. Yeah, and Arnold flying with Arnold. Arnold is a flight instructor. He's a he's a CFI. He has students. He signs them off for check rides, and they become private pilots. So it is um, it is a hundred percent awesome to just ask questions. If I don't know, which is very likely, there it's equally likely that there's a CFI hanging out that does know. Uh, most important question, what are your secondary personal minimums? Um, <laughs> I just go I just go five miles. Five and fifteen. And five is yeah, five and fifteen. We're so lucky here, though. <laughs> what are minimums? That. See, Hasim, you're learning already. Um, let me see if I could... Let me see if I can explain this knowing that there are CFIs here that will, will destroy me. If I get it wrong. Um, uh, mid, there, for your private pilot's license, you are getting a license for flying VFR only. And that means visual flight rules. So you have weather minimums that have to be met in order to be legal to fly in that weather, in, in those conditions. And they're, uh, hey, if, exactly, if I get it wrong, I can, I'll learn too. <laughs> and look, I will be on, I will be, 
painfully honest with you. Um, and Arnold will probably appreciate this as well. There's a lot of stuff that you need to learn to to pass your check ride. That when it that you need to know like off the top of your head. Rawl, thank you so much, very, very much for the subscription. I appreciate it. Welcome. Um, thank you so much for the support. Um, but there's stuff that you have to learn and have memorized for your private pilot check ride. And a lot of the time after that, it's stuff that you can like refer to later, later on. <laughs> Just use the Wagner method and just fly whenever you want. But minimums are the weather conditions that you're legal to fly in. The minimum weather conditions. And it's and it's usually... Saying usually is probably technically correct, but it's a visibility, distance, how far you can see, and a distance from clouds. Um... So if the visibility is two miles, you are not legal to fly in certain airspace. So that's where you have to know what airspace you're in. You got to know um, what the minim what the weather minimums are for that type of airspace, um, and be able and because that the, they change. Like one, the weather changes in the airspace you you. Uh, fly into can change as well so you could be you could be within minimums in the airspace that you're in and then not be in airspace that you're legal in given the same conditions meteorological conditions so based the, from basic perspective the weather minimums are usually like rampant said here three miles of visibility um, a thousand feet um, above clouds, 500 feet below clouds, and 2,000 feet laterally from clouds. Those are what would be weather, what would be the minimums are. Personal minimums are, okay, the, 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 the minimums are three miles. Let's just say that the majority of the airspace is three miles. You got three miles visibility. Uh, UAV, thank you so much for the gifted sub. That's awesome. Thank you. Asim, enjoy the audio cues. So let's just say, for to, for simplicity's sake, you need a legal... Legally, you need three miles visibility, and you got to be away enough away from clouds just for it to be whatever. Personal minimum is saying, okay, legally, it could be three miles, but I'm only comfortable with eight miles, or I'm only comfortable at five miles. Um, and then you get into the uh the winds as well and that's like my personal minimums are five miles visibility and 15 knots and that is kind of depends on the air like 15 knot direct crosswind i'm finding another place to land 15 knots down the runway that's totally fine um so that's what we mean by personal minimums versus actual minimums um, there's a lot of minimums in aviation whether whether it be personal minimums weather minimums or approach minimums yeah. yeah. oh that's really bright that personal minimum contract is awesome I did not uh, fill that up uh, I tried six miles during sunset two weeks ago. Very, very uncomfortable. I, Jojo, I agree, man. And um, my experience was five miles. Um, so I I did not like five. So that, to me, is the minimum. Um, if it's five, I am probably not going. Oh, I, I take that back. If it's five, I'm not going. If it's six, I'm looking at like the winds and does it get clear and is it in that area? What's it, you know, what what are the what's the cause of the six? Um, you know, like we were on the the video that hopefully you guys will see tomorrow. Um, 
the the minimums or the the um, visibility was ten, but it was a smoky ten, and it was like twelve. You know, so it, it was not the usual. Um, hey, we're we're ten, and you can you can see Santa Barbara from here. Um, it gets it gets sketchy pretty quick. Um, and three, like I mean, I just don't. People do it, obviously, but I haven't met too many too many pilots that will go fly VFR in three miles visibility. Just does not seem like uh, something that's done a whole lot. Um, gonna have to get you to get some sim flights out of the East Coast sometimes. Um, well, I will be setting up that sim, and we will absolutely do some East Coast stuff. That that is going to happen for sure. So, um, I I promise I will do that. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, UAV, have a good one, man. I've hit three miles visibility and had to divert to another airport because of that kind of weather. Moral of the story is be more conservative and don't take more risk than you should. It's a that is really a weird one. I mean, I get it because you want to have you want to give pilots the legal ability to to land the plane uh, in deteriorate, deteriorating conditions. Um, and I would say that four miles of visibility, you're going to be in a deteriorating visibility type of situation. And you want to give give people like the, you know, like okay, we can we can legally take our time and be smart about this and not rush like it's a flying into IMC type of situation, you know. Um, but it does honestly seem like it's a bit. Uh, yeah, three is low. <laughs> three is that is not a lot of visibility. Oh yeah, three is not good. Three is not good. It's it's um it's not something that you um you really you really have to experience less than ten for it to to really sink in. I think. I think Two once once I got a taste of that five mile visibility. Um, you get uncomfortable really quick. You're like, I am not used to not being able to see this far out because five miles is really not that long. It's not long at all. Uh, is night flying a lot different over a big metro than daytime? Uh, night flying in, in the LA area is totally, totally cheating. Uh, it's You have a constant horizon. It's really quiet. There's not a lot of traffic. It is absolutely beautiful 500 uh, landed there in my sim like five minutes ago <laughs> um, yeah it's it is um, it is beautiful flying at night here but it's cheating yeah especially if you got a full moon if you got a full moon flying at night in SoCal it's a joke if I didn't have my instrument ticket I wouldn't fly le less than five miles. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and five, and the only reason why I was comfortable picking five miles as my personal minimums is because I'd experienced it. Um, and I don't, I don't know. The more I think about it, the more it's just, I'm not gonna fly in in that weather. <laughs> like, I got and I know that kind of defeats the purpose of having personal minimums, but to me, it's it's more of a, like, I treat five miles as if it's IFR essentially. So anything less than five miles, I am treating it as it as if it's an IFR flight. So am I going to 
Am I going to go and fly to lunch with Julia at six miles visibility or seven miles visibility? No, that's not a that's not a good day. But if I am if I am landing or coming into an airport or an area and the visibility is four miles, I am treating that as if it's a IFR field and I'm not and I'm not landing there. But every flight is a little bit different. Um, so to to and it's not dependent on just the visibility to make that go no go decision. Um, Rampant, thank you so much for joining uh, for the subscription and everything. Um, that's awesome, dude. Cheers. Uh, as you should, because weather at at the point could easily deteriorate. That's a point I stress to my students: is that just because it's legal doesn't mean it's smart or safe. Yeah, that and that's where that conversation of um, personal minimums is important, but also. Also, just the the experience of it is important, and I think if there's a way to incorporate some like low visi lower visibility than than beautiful ten, you know, ten and clear um, into training is probably pretty good because that was it was eye opening for me to be able to see um, what that actually looks like. And go like, oh yeah, crap, dude. Because five miles, when you're just, when you're not, you know, when you're so new to everything, five miles seems like a long, a long way. Like I can see, you know, you can see five miles, you know, that's across town. But yeah, when you're on, when you're on a 12 mile final for John Wayne, and you are not going to see it for, you know, you know, half that distance, that sucks. Just flying around SoCal, flew over Disneyland. Nice. That's awesome. Julia, did I not ask for a scotch? <laughs> did I did I imagine that? <laughs> did I, I imagined asking for a scotch? I actually did ask for it and, and you said... Then you just effed off and said. Yeah. Just... No. Is it real? Oh my god. Oh, I told. I freaking told you. So there's Japan, kind of, and there's a, a couple of very key parts of Japan. Um, so, I think it looks good. I think it looks really, really good. Who uh, who wants to load up somewhere and go bush flying right now? 